By the way, guys, this review, non-spoiler, as much as possible. What up, K3TV? Loki here, bringing you another episode of Loki's Film Review. This time we're talking about John Wick 3, Parabellum. Prepare for war. And that's exactly what you're going to get in this. It doesn't even let you breathe how action-packed it is. For the first 15 minutes or so, I was just wanting to tap out with how quickly it just gets into the whole thing. The episodic nature of these films is uncomparable. It's like basically just another episode. And I guess that's why they're doing chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. It is great. It leads off right at the end like anyone would expect that chapter two uh, leads off on. You are thrown right into the sh shit storm that he created in the last two films. Now, just in case you haven't watched the other ones for some reason, I don't want to spoil too much of it. But he's found himself uh, basically running away from this whole syndicate, this seedy underground of masterminds and the high table, this world that is all about the assassins. And throughout the whole movie, you get so many different vibes from a ton of different uh, influences, such as like Assassin's Creed type of thing, like a Hitman type of feel for any gamers out there. You get the hand type of feel for any comic people. It's just insane how threatening the whole world really does seem in this one specifically. In the last one, it was like New York as a whole unit. In the one before that, it was just John Wick was the Baba Yaga and everyone feared him. Now it's the unstoppable force and the immovable object come face to face. And the main credo of this movie, if you want peace, prepare for war. So this movie is directed by Chad Stileski, starring, of course, your boy, the meme himself. Sad Keanu, uh, and other greats such as Ian McShane, which blew it out of the park, just being basically Ian McShane, as he always is, just that, like, regal badass, just looking down on everyone, not giving a shit, and just really menacing without having to be, just words stabbing you right in the face, you know, right in the heart, actually. And then we got Lawrence Fishburne getting to see Keanu with Lawrence Fishburne is always a treat. I mean, in the last one, it was insane just to see them together. Of course, they had to bring them back. We have someone that I wasn't really uh, familiar with, uh, which was uh, Asia Kate Dillon. Didn't really know much about her, but she actually didn't rub me the right way at first. But once you warm up to her, you really hate her. <laughs> But she is, uh, she's really fun to hate. She's got a presence to her that is just like, that, that's the man, you know, that's, that's the man trying to, trying to fight back. And she's the rules. She is the embodiment of that. And she does it very well. My favorite standout character in this film is definitely played by Mark Dacascos. He just is insane to watch. At first, it's just all because of his choreography and timing. And I'm a long time fan of his choreography. It's always been on par. If you guys don't know, he is uh, one of the crows, the TV show crow. So if any one of you five people caught that, <laughs> you know, you were in for a treat because he was great in that. It was amazing. He is in this equal parts, beautiful choreographic timing, as well as comedic timing, which is just basically his essence. And I was really looking forward to that, and it pays off. Just, it just pays off beautifully. He's just as quick with his punches as he is with his quips and comes, comebacks. Speaking of the choreography as a whole in this film, it is on par with some of the greatest old school classic movies out there. And in my opinion, I definitely believe that these will be classics and this one is gonna stand the test of time because the choreography in this, it doesn't always rely all heavy on CGI or anything like that. Um, 
it is well thought out and i think the thought that has gone into this movie's choreography stands out more than most of the writing in any movies that have been coming out uh recently such as Endgame or something like that which by the way this is the first movie to beat Endgame and take it down it's reign is over John Wick 3 the Baba Yaga came for the Avengers Halle Berry Halle Berry <laughs> she was <laughs> she was amazing I I'm not the biggest Halle Berry fan I mean I've watched her uh over the years and I just I always felt a little weird with her on screen she's always been a badass but i've never really bought it in this one i just buy it so much like anything from james bond uh swordfish something like that like i just never really got the feel too much of it she was always m much more of like a sex icon than uh, a badass uh, some people would definitely disagree with that and i know that but in this one damn is she a badass uh, on top of her being a badass, she has these two dogs um, that are both uh, Malinois, I believe, dogs. Uh, some people would think that they're German Shepherds, and people who know Malinois would get really um, pissy about that. Speaking of, shout out to my cousin, uh, Bullets underscore and underscore Fangs on IG. He actually um, does train them. So I've learned a little bit about them. If you guys want to uh, take a look, definitely do that, and don't get yourself a Malinois just because of how badass they are in this uh, movie because they are insane and if you want to see them in r real life definitely do that but yeah Halle Berry with those two dogs that you see in the trailer amazing they, they use them a little bit uh, much and it does get a little bit exhausting I would say uh, but it's still really satisfying uh, seeing that these are uh, really good uh, trained dogs and seeing them also choreographed amazingly. They give Halle Berry an outstanding uh, 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 part to the movie. It's almost like her part can be like a little mini movie, like, you know, whatever her not memorable character name was. The historic roots that this movie touch on are absolutely satisfying to any kind of a history buff or anyone that just likes that general kind of uh, world building knowledge. It's pretty accurate and it actually taught me more than I knew when I, I just really knew at the, the surface level. So I ended up looking it up afterwards. And the main thing that I'm talking about is assassins, where assassins come from. I would definitely leave that for you guys to watch that in the movie. And I don't want to mention too much of it. But if you have played things like Assassin's Creed, if you watch things that have to do with the history of assassins or just uh you know medieval type things uh you'll you'll start to get the the feel that this movie really brings a lot of historical elements into it um and it, he's no longer it's no longer just about just the baba yaga just the boogeyman it's much more than that it is a creed it is the real deal well in their world this movie is very self-aware from down to knowing the meme feel to it as well as the visuals it knows that it heavily relies on the visuals in this movie and the color grading in this is amazing it's very blue and bleak and dark most of the time but when things get serious you see lights everywhere it gets vibrant and even in one of the uh, paramount scenes they literally put in a light source i would say i don't want to say too much but they put in a sort of light source that makes the whole scene much more satisfying visually it didn't have to be that way and they definitely did that on purpose so the scenes the set design all the places that you'll see you don't get exhausted from it because it's different throughout the whole movie and they really spark joy into your eyes when when you're really um, getting into it the the sound of it as well like I mean even in the other movies a lot of people have always said the sounds of the guns the 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 feel of them sometimes they're a little bit cartoony but at the same time the accuracy in them is just amazing the score in this movie is just it's just everything just gets tied down so well in this the visuals the sound everything and the score especially 
gave me such anxiety on certain parts where it was it was definitely supposed to but it made me super uncomfortable um and then other parts it just pumped me up the score is just beautiful you got the the shrill notes where the shrill notes are supposed to be you got the nice deep earthy bass hits when it shit's about to go down it's just amazing it it, it goes with it, it ties it together um i went to go watch it in imax and i do not regret it if you guys still have not seen it IMAX is definitely one good option, or even if you're just going to go for the sound, it's, it's really good. It's one of those movies where you can do that, not just any other uh, movie, if you have the option to. Is this movie really good, though? Is, is it actually a movie that is not just all about just punches and kicks and getting to the next action sequence and all that? Does it have actual substance? I think it really does because of the world building and because of the actual character development that goes on to it. I mean, Keon, not really with Keanu. Keanu just gets sadder and sadder and more done with everyone else's shit <laughs> and just goes deeper into that. But you do end up unveiling that. If you watch the other two movies, you can, you can start to see it. So it's not too spoilery, but it looks as if though he's creating these problems for himself. So uh, it has character development, it has world building, it has great visuals, it has, you know, punchy punches, little timey quips and the comedy and the laughs here and there. I think it's a great movie. For what it is, it's a great movie. And if I'm going to have to go ahead and give this a review, I mean, uh, an, actual, an actual rating for this movie, I've got to go B+. Plus. It's almost damn near an A. Uh, I don't... I love action movies, but there are so many other great ones that I just, I can't give it really an A. If I were to, it'd be A minus. My final is definitely got to be, ah, screw it, A minus. A minus on this one. John Wick 3, Parabellum, if you want peace, prepare for war. I'm spitting because I'm so excited. Ah, For those of you guys who have watched this, this is not spoiler, but I do want to know. Is it worth making another one of these? This movie is making a ton of money at the box office. Like we said, beating out the other giant. Um, but is it worth actually making another one uh, in your guys' eyes? I think yes, definitely. I mean, I just gave it an A-, minus, so I definitely want to see another one. If they can do it again. It's, it's been a long time where a new franchise can make one good one after another good one after another good one. So can they do it a fourth legendary time? I think so. Let me know in the comments down below. I'm going to be coming back at you guys with a whole new world Aladdin review next week. Yeah, be excited, all you Disney fans. I know you guys are out there. You're a bunch of Disney freaks. Shit, I'm one of them. It's all right. A whole new... <laughs> uh, Thank you guys so much for watching this review. Please leave your likes, subscribe, and definitely comment on those questions down below. And I'll be coming back at you guys next week. K3TV, Loki, out.